Okay, so the next step after doing the CAD element is to put together my milling machine and then machine out all the aluminium parts to make the Y axis and the X axis travel with CNC. I'm going to do the Y axis first and then do the X axis where the Y axis will be CNC and I'll test it to make sure that it's all good and set it all up and then cut out the parts for the X axis and then set that one up as well. So I'll go through a quick setup of the milling machine and then I'm going to start machining out some of the parts. So I'll clean this up a little bit as well because it's a bit messy. So with this block, you can see that, with this block you've got a cut out so you can move this in and out just to take up the slack on the thread. So if I put the thread in there, there's a bit of play in the thread itself. So you can tighten this up and it just pulls that out and just bites on either side of the thread. And that stops any backlash on this part of it. There'll still be backlash at this end, but that stops any backlash here. But you don't want to do it too tight because it'll be too hard to rotate this. Uh, also, this is known as preloading, so it's preloading the thread on the screw. So I'll put that in first. I won't tighten them up just yet until I've set up this. So I can make sure it's nice and square once this is on. I'll put the wedge in there as well. And the wedge just makes sure by setting these set screws and the locking screw as well, that this sits and runs true and doesn't shake from side to side. There's some divots on here that correspond to each one of these. So I just gotta make sure that that's the right around. There's no dirt on there either. moment there's a bit of play on there so I just want to take the play away but still allow it to run freely on there So you just want to preload each one of these so it's not too difficult to move. But you just want to take it up so it's tight and then just bring it back a, about an eighth of a turn. So that should slide back and forwards quite nicely. There shouldn't be any movement left and right. There isn't there. That one there is just a locking screw. So while you're moving in this plane, you can just lock that off. And you won't be able to move it. And then just release that again. You can move that nice and freely. Right, now to set up this block here with the shorter of the two lead screws. Spray some molly slip on there and drop it off the mat. Very slippery stuff that. Right, stay. I just tighten that up, that's a bit too tight. I'll just loosen that up. And the same with the bottom one. It's not too tight and it's not loose at all.
Right, so now what I want to do is just spray a bit of that in there. And put that block on there. Much better. What you want to do is make sure that's free to move once these are tight. If it's not, then it's a binding against the block that's underneath. Right now, what we're going to do is tighten the bits on the bottom. So that's nice and free. That can rotate with my fingers. Now I need to put the end on. So a little three mil keyway. It's gonna go in there. Keyway, put that on. Put a lock nut on it. Take it until it's tight and then just back it off slightly. That travels nicely. So I'm getting 0 0.05 mil of backlash on there and it's nice and easy to move. There's no lateral movement on that as well. Right, so time to put this one back together. Again, I'll undo these. These are the set screws for the x-axis. Just to set these up. Make sure the wedge is nice and clean. And the channel that it goes in. And the channels are the bottom of the table as well. So that's got lateral movement at the moment. I'll do the same again. That slides nicely back as a board. If it won't go off the edge this time, loads more. Loads better. That took a bit of um, took a bit of setting up. So now that runs really smooth on there. And I can feel the tiniest of lateral movements on that one. So I've got some preloading on there. Now I need to tighten these. I think I need a shim. You could do with a bit of copper underneath here as these bolts are going into there it's pulling it too tight and then this is binding on it so 
I'm just going to use this bit of copper as a shim underneath to lift it up a bit. That's nice and tight. I can still rotate that. No, it moves nicely in and out. Again, 0 0.05 mil of backlash on there. Both axes are 0.05 mil of backlash. As long as I know what the backlash is, you can take it out with software later, or you can allow for it, or cut it in one direction, which is what I do. Right, now I need to put the top on. So there's another one of those wedges behind here and I just want to make sure that that's running true and nice and tight. Right, now that that's all set up, it's nice and smooth in all directions now. So that's the x-axis, that's your y-axis. So it's nice and smooth, there's no movement there whatsoever. And also that's nice and smooth as well. Right, so now I've got to set up the tram to make sure that this is perfectly level and that that is straight.
Right, that's all set up. So that's kept its squareness really well, considering it's been taken apart and put back together again. So that's ready to machine. So now the milling machine's up and running, I should be able to get on with uh, making all the parts and converting it to CNC and then getting on with the MGF project. So now I've got all the kit for the CNC machine. I've got the two O-Drive motors, the O-Drive itself, the rotary encoders and the brake resistor. All the bearings that I need for the poly system. Uh, all the polys, all the bolts as well, washers, uh, the thick 10mm squared 7AWG cable uh, to reduce the resistance from the motors back to the O-Drive and I've also got these blue backlit alphanumeric displays with uh, four lines of 20 characters. So that will display the position of the table on the CNC machine and other information like program and potentially G-code and things like that on there as well. Also, I've treated myself to a load of new milling bits, so I should be able to cut the aluminium a lot quicker and a lot more efficient. So if you're still with me right at the end, thank you very much for watching the video, and please check out my Patreon page and my website and other YouTube videos, just to see what I'm up to. And thank you very much for watching. <laughs>